Let's talk about the d- 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 duel of the week. Iowa versus Nebraska. Number one, Iowa versus number five, Nebraska. This is the duel of the week going down this Friday night, 9 o'clock p.m. in Iowa City. That's 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. There's only one unranked wrestler in this entire duel. So that just tells you how amazing this duel is going to be. I mean, it's there are going to be fireworks in this duel. And, and before I get into the actual projections, what I think is going to happen, please let me know in the comments below who wins. Does Iowa win it outright easily? Or is Nebraska going to be able to pull something off? So let's talk about all of this in this in this segment. So these are the lineups here. Uh, the only unranked guy that is even in this lineup right now is potentially Nathan Hass at 184. That's if he re- does not wrestle. Uh, and I think that Venge will be back at 184 for Nebraska. But the only other guy is Alex Thompson at 133 for Nebraska is unranked right now uh, by Flow Wrestling, which is where I'm getting my wrestling rankings. You know, some people, there, there's a whole argument about where to get wrestling rankings, you know. So take it, this obviously with a grain of salt. So Let's talk about each of these matches and who could potentially win. So let's start out at 125 pounds. In at 125 pounds is Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee starting out the duel uh, versus Cronin. Number one, Spencer Lee, top 15 guy in Liam Cronin. He pinned him last season. He also was a tech fall against him. And I... I really see this going another pin for Spencer Lee this year. You know, Spencer Lee is going to prove that he's the guy again. Recent Hodge Trophy winner. Uh, you know, I really think that he's he's going to get the fall or at least bonus points if he does not end up getting the fall. So that, that puts up Iowa big right off the bat. Next, let's talk about the uh, 133 pounds. And at 133 pounds, it's DeSanto and Alex Thompson. And with DeSanto and Alex Thompson... Um, DeSanto's a top five guy. Say what you want about DeSanto. Like, I really do love watching him wrestle. I think he brings a lot of grit, a lot of energy to his matches. It's his senior season. I mean, whether he comes back for another year with this extra year of eligibility, we'll see. But, you know, Thompson is sophomore. Uh, 13 and 15 last season. DeSanto, I think, is just going to take it to him. I think he's going to get that, pick up that major decision and pick up four points for the Iowa Hawkeyes. At 141, we're going to get the debut of Jaden Ironman, the top two ranked wrestler. At 141 pounds, he, we're going to get his debut in an Iowa singlet going up against number five, Chad Red. So an exciting matchup right off the bat for Ironman and uh, and Chad Red, right? So Ironman, it's his first time back on the mat since 2019. Uh, well, I mean, he's wrestled freestyle matches in the past year, but first time back in the folk style college D1 mat. He's back on the mat in an Iowa singlet, three-time All-American, but Chad Red's a two-time All-American. Now, unfortunately, I mean, Chad Red won his first match of the season. He won by decision against an unranked guy from Minnesota. He's going to have to do more if he wants to beat Jaden Ironman. I don't know if he's there yet. You know, we'll see in this match. I don't know if he's there yet. And that's why I think, I also think that because they're in Iowa, even though I, I don't think that they're going to be fans, but I mean, they're in their home arena in Carver Hawkeye. That brings some sort of energy, at least, some excitement. And I think Ironman picks up that win just by a decision. You know, probably not more than that. I mean, may, maybe pulls out something crazy. I, I just don't see it happening. At 149, at 149 pounds, Max Murin will make his debut at 149 pounds, and he will be going up against a uh, Brock Hardy. Now, Brock Hardy is somebody who made a big statement in the past week by upsetting Michael Blockus of Minnesota. Hardy is coming back from a two-year mission trip. Pick that information up from Matt Scouts. Actually, didn't even know he's coming back from a two-year mission trip. But he is coming back from that. And, and so that's kind of cool. So he's a little bit older, but he is a freshman of Nebraska. And he's a top 20 ranked guy right now after that win against Michael Blockus of Minnesota. Max Murin bumping up to 149. We'll see how he does. I, I think he I think he is built for 41 a little bit better, but obviously he knew he was bumping up, so he had the time to put it weight, you know, weight left in the offseason and, and kind of get up there. This is a match I think can actually go in Hardy's way. I, I, I think can go Hardy's way. And if he beats Max Murin, I mean just beating Blockus and then Murin would be a huge statement for Nebraska and for Hardy. I think this is one of the upsets of the duel. I'm, I'm calling, I think this may be one of the upsets of the duel and of the night. At 157, and, and please let me know if you think I'm, I'm absolutely crazy for saying that. At 157, Caleb Young and Caleb Licking. 
the battle of the Caleb's. Uh, number nine is top ten guy in Caleb Young. Now listen, Young is is it's he's a senior. I mean, it, both these guys are seniors, but uh, this is going to be a it's going to be Young's redemption. You know, he was zero two at Big Tens last year, and I I, like, I don't want to keep bringing that up because he's way better than that. You know, Young is better than that. All American. I mean, he he's. He just he needs to redeem himself, and I think this is the match that he can do it. Uh, he's not necessarily known for like being a bonus point scorer, a bonus points guy, but um, this is also Licking's first official season on the mat. So I, I do want to mention that a little bit, right? Licking hasn't even wrestled like official duels in the past, and this season he, he has a ten to five loss to Brayton Lee, but. He wrestled him tight, and as a senior, we'll see how he's going to do against Kayla Young. I expect Young to still get the win, but by just a decision. Just a decision, I think he's going to get that. Then 165. 165 is going to be, it's going to be hype, okay? 165 is going to be hype. Marinelli versus Peyton Robb. Peyton Robb, unfortunately, has that loss to Sparks of Minnesota. Uh, but Robb, former national qualifier, but Alex Marinelli... Alex Marinelli is on a mission this year. I, I truly believe that he is determined. He thought that last year was, I mean, last year was taken from him and so many other wrestlers, but how is Marinelli going to do? I think he's determined, and I think that he's going to come out strong this year. I think as a top two-ranked wrestler at 165, I think he's going to get the major decision against Peyton Robb, uh, especially because, you know, an unfortunate loss from Robb last week, although Robb will be looking to redeem himself, and this this will be the match to do it, but I, I don't think... I see him going that way against Marinelli. Now, let's talk about 174 with Kemmer and Labriola. And there's a lot of excitement here. There's a lot of excitement here. But before I talk about that excitement, uh, I do want to tell you that I, I actually did talk about how Nebraska could beat Iowa. Um, and I talked about that in another video. Because right now, it, it kind of seems like it's, it's a, a really one-sided. Unless unless Iowa, you know, I talk about Iowa picking up these last... Or Nebraska pick, picking up these last couple of matches. I don't know if it's possible. We'll see. But... If you're interested in seeing how Nebraska could win this duel, make sure you check out the other video on my channel where I dive deep into that or the article on the Patreon page. But with at 174 with Kemmer and Labriola, a lot of people don't realize, but this came down to the wire last year. It was it was one to one until Kemmer was able to pick up the takedown with like 30 seconds left in the match in the duel. I mean, Labriola was working for the takedown in in he, he will continue to be working for the takedown, but he's going to have to wear down Kemmer in this match in order to get that. And that's what he was doing a lot of the, a lot of the duel. Like I watched this. I mean, I watched the duel from or the duel in the match from last year and it was exciting. Labriola was super good at squaring up, getting that de shot defense in and defending Kemmer's shot. And he was so close to actually taking Kemmer down a couple of times, but can Labriola pull off the win? It, it's possible but this time, this year, I still right now have Kemmer winning. If if you want to, if like you're talking to your other friends, your wrestling friends and, and family, and you're like, this, what duel or what match could be an upset? This is the one I think could be the upset with Labriola and Kemmer at 174. At 184, you know, Venz did not wrestle last week, but I think we're going to see him wrestle this week. Uh, Nathan Haas still was able to get the win at 184 last week for Nebraska, but then we have Assad or Brands. You know, that, that's the question. Is it going to be Assad again, who's a top 10 ranked guy, or Nelson Brands, who could be a top 10 ranked guy? And it's just, it's crazy the depth that Iowa has. And obviously, it's even tougher for Nelson Brands. Like, I if he can't make the lineup, like, I doubt that he's going to transfer schools because, well, he's coach's son. And, and, and you know, there, there's a lot of good things to go along with that. But, like, obviously, you know, Brand is putting out the best wrestler, whoever that may be. And I think they have some opportunity to change guys out. But Venz and Assad, if we're going with those two guys, they're one and one against each other last year. Venz uh, lost the first match against Assad and then picked up the win at Big Tens. Now, if, if Haas can win or if he gets in the lineup, I still think he has a chance to win. He has the win against Webster of Minnesota. But overall, I mean, I, I think that. I actually am, am picking, I don't, it's actually not an upset because Venge is number six and Saw is number eight, but I'm picking Nebraska to win this match in a decision. I think they're going to be able to get it. At 197, Warner and Schultz. Warner and Schultz did wrestle last year. Uh, 
And, and Schultz has the most recent win in the duel, a 3-1 to one win. And another tight one, just like the Labriola and Kemmerer match. Now, Warner is actually 2-1 and one against Schultz. So he's two wins to Schultz's one win. But Schultz has, has the most recent victory. Schultz was able to get the takedown. I mean, it was... It, the, the similarities between the Kemmer and Labriola match and this match are actually kind of uncanny. He got the takedown with with 30... Actually, it was like 15 seconds left. It was crazy. 15 seconds left. You, you got to watch this match. And everything, as always, is linked in the description below, but you can find it on YouTube. Um, but it's something that you definitely have to check out is that match. So, who's going to win? To be honest with you, I think either of these guys are national title contenders. And at 197, that's a weight where... I still truly believe that any guy can win 197. I think that is a weight class that's super competitive, but super open, and anybody can win it. I I, I picked Schultz to be in the national finals this year. I, I said that months ago. I still believe that. I think he's going to pick up the win, the decision against Warner. And at 285 pounds, Cassiope and Lance uh, is the final match of the evening, or at least we'll see what's the final match of the evening. But as far as heavyweight, Cassiope number three and Lance number 12. Cassiope won last year in a 6-1 to one decision. He was able to win. Got a pair of takedowns. Cassiope's not like a real big, you know, bonus guy. So I, I don't necessarily expect a lot of bonus out of him in this match. Just a decision. So what what's the final score of the duel according to what I have here? I have Iowa winning 26-9, to which would be a huge win over a top five ranked Nebraska, who I think Nebraska is just an incredible team this year. But if Iowa pulls off the season with this type of opening, a 26-9 win, that would just propel them forward with immense momentum heading into the rest of the season. If you like this clip and are looking for more wrestling news and discussion, I recommend you check out the full Fanco Wrestling Show podcast, which is live on this YouTube channel every single week. You can click here to subscribe to be notified of new and upcoming videos, or you can check out the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform to listen on the go. Stop stalling and start listening today.